literally, at a neurological level, the same two regions of the brain that are hyperactivated, chronically hyperstimulated when we play video games, are the same two regions of the brain that over more than a decade of research shows are chronically understimulated when you have clinical depression and even shrink in size that you lose gray matter over time if you have clinical depression. Uh, so this is fMRI footage from Stanford University. They were the first research lab to figure out how to get a game controller in an uh, MRI machine without blowing it up. Uh, so thank you, Stanford researchers. Um, you guys know how fMRI footage works. The hot areas are where all the blood is flowing in the brain. Um, and they were looking for patterns that were distinctive to gameplay. Not only which regions of the brain seem to be really stimulated, but in what patterns in relationship to the game. Okay, so they found two things. Um, two regions of the brain that activate in a very specific pattern. Let me explain to you what that pattern is. Every time you make a decision in a game, these two parts of the brain fire up. Um, and it, it is not when you win in the game, it's not when something goes well for you in the game, it's not when you get rewards in the game. This is just when you make a decision, when you take an action, when you fire a virtual weapon, when you navigate around a corner. When you make a decision and you're waiting to see what happens next, I swap these candies, are they lining up how I thought they would? In that moment of anticipation, we get two parts of the brain lighting up every time you make a decision. And think, in many games, you might make 20 decisions a minute, you know, constantly swapping tiles, navigating, firing. So this is happening in a really uh, extremely repetitive and fast manner. Um, so the first, it's labeled here the caudate and thalamus. You can see the, the, this side near me is the person playing a video game. The part where it's not lighting up is somebody watching that other person play the game. So just watching the game, seeing the media, listening to it, does not activate the brain in this interesting way. You have to be in charge of the game. You have to be making the decisions. So this, uh, this part of the brain that's associated with rewards and memory lights, uh, rewards and motivation lights up. And uh, this is the same part of the brain associated with addiction. So you may have seen headlines when this research first came out that said things like, uh, video games activate the same region of the brain as cocaine. Ah, scary. Um, but that's because this part of the brain, when it lights up, it makes you very goal-oriented. And the more blood is flowing to this region of the brain, the more focus you are on the goal, the more energy and effort you'll put towards it, the less distracted you get, the less likely you are to give up if things are difficult. So if that is getting hyperactivated by a substance and, and now you will do whatever it takes to get that substance, we consider that a negative addiction. But if you're trying to learn something new, or if you're trying to achieve a goal that's important to you but you might face a lot of obstacles, seeing the, this part of the brain lit up in this way is wonderful because it means you will stay focused, that you're going to keep your goal in mind even as things are difficult. Um, and so this part of the brain is, is firing up. And the reason why it's firing up is because it's anticipating success. Right? You did something, you think it might have worked, now you're going to find out and the brain gets excited, yay, I might have done something good, and it gets uh, this reward feeling, whether or not you did the thing correctly. So even if you fail, you're still getting this hit, you're still getting this dopamine hit. The other part of the brain that lights up in this consistent pattern every time you make a decision is the hippocampus, which is the part of the brain associated with learning and memory. When this part of the brain is getting a lot of blood flow, it kind of sends you into learning overdrive. Uh, when your brain perceives an opportunity to learn something that will help it perform better in the future. It goes into this kind of information, absorb and process overdrive. It's like taking a power up uh, in Super Mario. Suddenly you are able to process more information, you're able to process it more quickly and use it in real time to make better decisions. This is your brain's sort of evolutionary way of getting better at things that are important for your survival. And whenever you are in a context that the brain perceives there is an opportunity to get information that will be helpful to you in the future, this part of the brain fires up. Now, video games are a context that the brain gets very excited about from a learning perspective because video games, if you fail, you get to try again. This is an environment where all the feedback you get can be used in the future without penalty for you to try again. So every time you make a decision or take an action, this part of the brain fires up because it says, hey, whether or not this was the right thing to do, you're gonna get some feedback now. I'm gonna take that feedback, I'm gonna absorb it, process it, and the next time you're gonna get better. So um, these two parts of the brain are, as I said, the same two parts of the brain that are chronically understimulated when you're clinically depressed. 
you are unable to get excited about goals or to imagine success or imagine positive outcomes, which is why it feels like you lack the physical energy or the drive to do things that are difficult. And the hippocampus actually shrinks, which makes it much harder to kind of pull yourself out of depression because getting out of depression often involves learning new skills, new ways of thinking, making decisions in your life to do things differently. And when the hippocampus is shut down, it actually does make it harder for you to learn or change your behavior. Um, so these two parts of the brain are getting chronically stimulated when we play video games. Uh, this is the best explanation for why so many people with depression seem to self-medicate with video games. Um, that's a different talk, uh, but it's, it's, it's one that uh, it's, it's, it is a exciting talk. Um, but this is why I refer to people who spend you know, at least a few hours a week playing video games as super empowered, hopeful individuals because they are firing up this kind of chronic neurochemistry of people who are going to stay engaged with tough goals even when things are difficult. And it's not a kind of stupid, dumb, stubborn perseverance because when the hippocampus is fired up, you are able to learn faster, you are able to improve. So it actually makes sense for you to hang in there for a little bit longer because you are more likely to get better and improve.